I have never met a person who doesn't like winning. Everybody I know loves winning. Everybody loves winning. Matter of fact, my office is filled with faces who love winning. You know, you got Tyson here, you got Tiger here, you got Brady here, you got Jordan here, you got George Washington's autograph. You got a bunch of people here that are winners. These are guys who won. These are guys who won at the highest level. But the one thing I can tell you about winning is that most people, uh, I was talking to a guy the other day, and this is kind of gonna get me into the next one I wanna talk to you about is, the guy's coming up to me, somebody, you know, I, I beat everybody and I'm doing this and I'm doing, I'm so great at what I do. And then I said, against who though? He says, what do you mean? I said, who are you beating? And he told me who was beating. I said, you know what you're doing? He says, what's that? I said, you're only competing against people that are below you. You're not competing against people that are above you. Because who's really a threat? Tell me who you've beaten. And he says, well, how about this person? I said, no, you're not beating anybody. I said, that's kind of like a senior in high school bullying a seventh grader. I said, what do you think about a senior in high school beating up a seventh grader? What do you call that? A bully, right? Does anybody respect the person? No, you're not beating anybody that's worthy of competition. You're taking the easy way out. This is one of the reasons why Muhammad Ali was so respected in the game of sports and boxing because he fought everybody at their peak at their best, Foreman, Norton, Frazier, at their best. And it's one of the biggest criticisms sometimes Mayweather would get because he didn't fight Pacquiao at his best. It was a little bit later on who he fought. So what's the moral of the story? Look, most of us hate losing just as much as we love winning, right? But the moment losing becomes okay and you tolerate losing, losing becomes accepted. If it doesn't hurt anymore, you'll accept it. And I'm talking in anything. If you're okay losing, to you becomes normal. Ah, it's okay. It's not a big deal. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And I know this sounds strange because I don't know if you've ever, ever, ever seen the movie Prefontaine. It's the story of Prefontaine. There's a scene in the movie uh, with Jared Leto playing it and he's running. And in this one scene, this kid is about to beat him. And he's like, wait a minute, you can't really beat me in life, but I'm going to let you beat me, but I'm, you can't really beat me in life. So to him, it was almost like, no, 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 if I let this kid beat, it's a psychological way of me giving it. Now, I know historically when you read, you know, and study animals and parents, a lot of times fathers, or you'll hear certain animals when their, ki when their kids are hitting them, you know, they'll act like it's hurting to make the, you know, their son or their daughter feel like they're stronger. And sometimes parents do that, oh, that hurts. Oh, because the kid is like so much. I understand the development process of building your kids. I get that. But if you compete in the marketplace and losing no longer hurts, it becomes a habit. And once it becomes a habit, you don't just lose in one area. You start losing in every area of your life because you're okay losing. Now, I'm not talking here about, you know, well, do you mean like every negotiation I should lose or every negotiation I should win and no matter what it is, I'm not talking about collaboration is at the highest level. I'm not talking about you being okay to, what I'm talking about is you're growing your business. Okay, and you're going up against somebody and all of a sudden you lose one time, you lose second time, you lose third time and you're okay with it? That mentality stays here and it sticks, it's a spirit. And the read, like the only time, I remember one time I lost, I'll never forget this, I lost in a very ugly way. And I got up on stage and I got up on stage, this was 2006, 2007, I got up on stage and they made me give the trophy to the other guy, I remember till today. I gave the trophy to the guy and they said, the loser has to give the other person a message. And I got up and I gave the trophy. Very honorable, very easy going. I gave it to him, I congratulated the guy. And I said something, I whispered something in his ear. I said, I just want you to know something here. He says, what's that? I said, you will never beat me for the rest of your life. Never, it's just not gonna happen. He says, really? I said, you will never beat me for the rest of your life. I said, you're gonna have to kill me to beat me. It's just not gonna happen. Cause I don't like losing. And I lost that year because I didn't work as hard that year. I thought I'd already like made it. I was like, oh, I'm good, all this other stuff. I'll never forget, I was 26, 27 years old, making somewhat decent money, 26, 27, 28 years old. And I got a little bit cocky and I got caught. And it was great that it happened to me. Phenomenal that it happened to me. But I questioned myself. I said, how does it feel right now, Pat? You okay with it? Yeah, because you know, most people right after they lose, oh, they go to have a few drinks to kind of get over it. I internalized the pain. I went to my room, looked at myself in the mirror saying, so PBD, tell me, you okay with this? You okay losing in front of 600 people? You just lost right now. And that's an ugly loss. What are you gonna do about it? Huh? 
What are you going to do about it? You're going to be okay with it. I came back. I started reading 10, 15 books a month. I started showing up to work 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, staying up till 10, 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and I work 100 hours a week. And I said, this will never happen again because I don't like to lose. Do I lose? All the time. I lost today. I lost last week. I lost last month. All the time. But the only times I am okay, it hurts a little bit less, is when I'm David and I go up against Goliath. In every measurable category, odds are against me to win. I'm not supposed to win because I'm facing a Goliath. Not supposed to win when I face a Goliath. And I get close to beating this guy and I tell myself, ooh, let me tell you what's around the corner. I can beat these guys here soon. Man, it hurts because it was so close. But wait to see what's going to happen next month or next year or next quarter or three years from now. But I'm coming. I'm coming. Uh, and I know this sounds crazy to some people, but it doesn't sound crazy to Roger Federer or Nadal or Tiger or Brady or Jordan or Kobe or Magic or Rock. It doesn't sound weird to these guys because it's the wiring and you got to think about that. So very simple question for you. Very simple question for you. How do you respond when you lose? Are you okay with it? And after you lose, do you just forget about it and move on? Or do you come out as a whole different person changing, improving, saying, wait till you see what I'm going to do next? No one knows that. Only you know that because there's only one person that can answer that question and it's you. And by the way, if you watch this video, I got another video I want you to watch. Is how to think big as an entrepreneur. If you've never watched it, click over here and go watch the video, How to Think Big as an Entrepreneur, because it has a lot to do with today's message. Have a killer week, everybody. Love you. Bye-bye.